mod x is a convex function and minus 1 comma 1 right for example right and you take x is r this is measure space and the mu is the Lebesgue measure right f is any function in l1 mu okay and open minus 1 comma 1 right here take x is uh, okay r then let us write a note of this interval over right interval from minus 1 to 1 modulus of f d mu this can be written as integral minus 1 to 1 mod f d so phi is a function mod x so whenever i, I instead of mod value I, I can take this right mod f of x is a composition of phi and f d f so first thing well, let us take the left hand side inequality values t let's small t equal to interval over x f d mu then we look at the range of t What, what happened to the ray? Okay, range of t. Now we'll study the ray. Okay. <clears throat> we estimate the range of t, right? So we know the estimate of f of x, right? So since k less than f of x less than b, okay, integrating the inequality, the integration of f follows the following. The integration of f over x okay follows or satisfies what is that integral over x a d mu less than or equal to integral over x f d mu less than or equal to integral over x b d mu that's the point this implies it a is constant so take it outside the integral of one the integration is like this integral over x one d mu one d mu can be written as a characteristic function over x so this is less than or equal to integral over x f d mu as it is in the previous step b into integral over x one d mu here our characteristic function over x this is exactly one right because if all for all x in capital x the value is one if I take x in capital X, that belongs to it. Okay, so this is exactly. Now, what is the value of this integral? Measure of whole x, which is less than or equal to integral over x. F d mu less than or equal to integral over x. Not integral. B into measure of whole x. Okay, this, is, this implies measure of whole x is 1. So, A less than or equal to integral over x. F d mu. So less than or equal to b since measure of all x is 1. So the t lies not open into now the t is the number. So t is the number in this open interval, right? Now I'm going to take yes left to the t. Okay. And we take the supremum of the quotient of phi. Let's so beta is the supremum of phi of t minus phi of s divided by t minus s. Right? But t take s taken overall. This. S yes, taken overall, okay. The supremum taken overall, okay. S yes, less than t. Now, what happened to the relation between beta and these numbers? Okay, clearly, for any S yes, belongs to a, a comma t, beta is the greatest. least upper bound so so phi of t minus phi of s divided by t minus s less than or equal to beta 
Now we cross multiply this value phi of t minus phi of s less than or equal to beta times t minus s. We take the beta of s out other side, phi of s other side, beta to the left. So it implies phi of s is greater than or equal to phi of t. Right? Minus beta into t minus s plus s minus t. This inequality one I think. We take the inequality in the theorem is one. So this I take two. If I take any number, if so for any number, let u be a number, let u belongs to t comma b by the convexity of so by the convexity of phi. For any s belongs to a comma t, what which means what? A less than s, less than t, less than u, less than b. This is a situation I have, right? This is a situation I have. So in this situation, I apply the definition of convex equivalent condition of convexity. This is less than or equal to phi of u minus phi of t divided by u minus t. This is true for any s in uh, a comma t. So taking supremum in the left hand side, supremum, okay, in the left over Then the supreme is already beta, which is less than or equal to by of u minus phi of t divided by u minus t. So this implies that phi of u is greater than or equal to phi of t plus beta into u minus t. First, you cross multiply u minus t, take the u minus t to the left, and the by of t in the left. Then we rewrite this. This is equation number three. So this three is true for epsilon. U is arbitrary, right? U is arbitrary. So this is true for any u. Okay, for any u in a comma t. From inequality in the place of s in u in two, we have u in three. So combining two and three. So the difference between uh, Inequality two and three is okay. It's the following: u is in the place of s. Okay. So therefore, we write phi of s greater than or equal to phi of t plus beta times s minus t for all s belongs to a comma b. If s is to the if s is left to the to the t. We apply two. If s is right to the t, then we take three. Okay, this is, so. This is equation number four. Inequality four. So integrating four with respect to. Okay, uh, if not integrating. This is for every s in. The, then for any x in uh, capital X, a less than f of x less than b. So we replace s yes by f of x in four. We get and we get 
and you get the following phi of f of x greater than or equal to phi of t plus beta times f of x minus t. This is true for all x in capital X. Now integrating now integrating the above inequality with respect to with respect to mu over x. And what do you will obtain? You obtain the following. Obtain integral of phi circle f d mu over x which is greater than or equal to split this right hand side right hand side term renda over stand over phi of t d mu plus integral over x beta f of x minus t d mu phi of t is a fixed number phi of t is fixed constant so i take phi of t integral over x d mu this also can be split into two beta integral over x f d mu minus beta integral over x t d mu t is also constant it is integral over x t d mu right here mu is a, t is also constant that can be taken out This is mu of x plus beta integral over x f d mu minus beta t integral over x d mu. So this number is mu of x that is 1, right? So in the next step mu of x is 1. So we have phi of t plus beta integral over x t d mu, sorry f d mu minus beta t. So beta can be taken out. So I write this. T is integral f d mu. So this get cancelled, right? Okay, this get this is zero. Therefore, Therefore, phi of t less than or equal to integral over x phi circle f phi of f of x, right? Phi of f of x d. Phi of f of x. So t is integral over x f d mu. So less than or equal to integral over x phi circle f d mu. Okay, this is the injunction equality. Okay. Still have a doubt? Still have a doubt? First in a bandra. The inequality of one lurker integration, the inequality one lurker and the integration of the t not through the t not through. Clear about the t or range first to conduct t is integral over x f d mu t or range is in the conduct f or range in the conduct right. Other integrate panaina a less than f d mu of the norm right. So that t is lies between a comma b a and b. Then we consider this quotient and you take supremum okay, of this quotient overall yes less than t. Right? By the definition of this uh, upper bound property, yes is yes okay, satisfies this. And the, we rewrite this and phi of s greater than phi of t plus beta is minus t. If we take any u in uh, t comma b. And by the convexity of phi, 
we write this equation. This is the equivalent okay, condition for that inequality appearing in the convexity definition. Now taking supremum in the left, so beta, left hand side okay, is the number which is less than or equal to phi of u minus phi of t by u minus t. This is true for all any s in a comma t. Okay, so this right hand side quotient will become the upper bound of this quotient, left hand side quotient. So beta is the least upper bound, so which is upper bound is bigger. Again, we rewrite this inequality such as phi of u greater than or equal to phi of t plus beta u minus t. Right. Then these two inequalities combined together. Okay, to have this number four. Then in the place of uh, t, yes, we take f of x. So phi of f of x greater than or equal to something. Now integrate this and evaluate the right hand side integration. And we arrive that it is equal to phi of t. So phi of t less than or equal to interval over x phi of d mu. Yes. Okay. So now we verify this inequality for different uh, measure spaces. Okay. Suppose. X is and we you take different convex uh, functions phi and you find different inequalities, right? Uh, consider x equal to R first measure Lebesgue measure space R M M Lebesgue measure space. So integral over and you take phi of x equal to x power p. Right? You take modulus x power p. On one less than p, less than infinity. Right? Then what about this uh, function? This function is differentiable, right? Phi is differentiable. For one less than p, less than infinity. Right? And what about this phi dash of x? What about phi dash of x? If it is differentiable, to verify that function is convex, it's enough to the, prove that phi is phi dash is increasing, right? Phi dash is p into. Uh, we don't want this uh, example. We we'll, we we'll discuss later about this. Okay. A simple. Uh, so if I, I take phi of x equal to e power x. And e power x phi is convex because phi dash is e power x again, phi double dash is e power x again, which is greater than or equal to 0. So phi dash is increasing. This implies that phi is convex. Then we have this inequality e power exponential of interval over x f dx integral from minus infinity to infinity or which is less than or equal to interval minus infinity to infinity e power f dx The second space is counting measure space. In counting measure space, right, by taking phi of x equal to mod x, phi of n equal to mod n, right, modulus of summation and from 1 to infinity, 
right? A n. Is this less than or equal to summation n from 1 to infinity mod A n. Here integration will become summation, right? Integral over summation over n. Right? On dimension on natural numbers we take. So this function absolute value function. So modulus of this less than or equal to Okay? Correct? inequality. This is restriction of Jensen inequality. Inequality solitary most important inequality. x one finite set Right? X for example, P1, P2, etc., Pn. Right? This is sigma algebra on the power set. Measure of each point is 1 by n. I from 1 to etc n right Up a measure of whole space in a pure measure of p1 p2 pn are the union of n sets are the over set to one by n measure n set to go whole thing into one right very fine you got to verify this okay so suppose i take a function from x to r, right? This is n, n number, n points are given. Excellent. Another over point or image is given. Yeah, that is x i in that. Okay. Inverse image of every open set is the subset of uh, this finite set. So this is the power set. That is na inverse image of every open set lies in two x. That is a. So x is f is measurable I don't. right and i take phi of x equal to e power x as a convex function for me now by jensen inequality jensen inequality implies that that jensen inequality is applicable here right you know this f of x okay assumes only finite number of values so it is bounded set so by jensen inequality phi of integral over x f d mu if integral over x f d mu what are doing yes is epdi eludalam x indrathu p1 p2 pn adanal idu epdi maathi eludikalam summation i from 1 to n is actually enna varum appadina x1 by n x2 by n etc x n by n you know f has only finitely many numbers right range f under simple function na f under simple function right f for a value na x1 as a corresponding measure 1 by n x2 as a corresponding measure 1 by yeah x1 irukku liya adu adoda inverse image paakalam ipo over adu x f of x oda over value xi that is inverse image. Corresponding PA. Right? This is singleton PA. The set. Measure of singleton PA is 1 by n. F inverse of xi 1 by n. Value. And the value inverse image is 1 by n. That is measure 1 by n. x2 1 by n and so on. So, in the integral value, x1 1 by n, x2 1 by n. So Okay, it is less than or equal to integral over x phi circle f d mu. Now, phi is e power x. Yeah. Phi circle f is function x to r. Right? Over i ko, for each i in from, from 1, 2, 3, etc. n. Right? e power x i is the phi circle f of p a. 
ஆக்சுவலாக ஃபை ஆஃப் எஃப் ஆஃப் பிஐன்னு எழுதணும் எஃப் ஆஃப் பிஐ வேல்யூ என்ன எக்ஸை ஃபை வேல்யூ இப்போ ஒரு எக்ஸை இப்போ ஒரு எக்ஸை ஸோ இதுதான் ஃபைவ் சர்க்கிள் இப்போ இதோட இன்டகிரேஷன் என்ன எக்ஸ் ஃபைவ் சர்க்கிள் எஃப் டிமியூ இதுக்கு வேல்யூ வந்து இ போர் எக்ஸ் ஒன் இ போர் எக்ஸ் டூன் இருக்கு இதோட இன்வைஸ் இமேஜ் பி ஒன் பி டூ பி அப்போ இ போர் எக்ஸ் ஒன் பை என் இ போர் எக்ஸ் டூ பை என் ப்ளஸ் அண்ட் ஸோ ஒன் இ போர் எக்ஸ் என் பை என் ரைட் இப்போ அந்த இன்னி ஈக்வாலிட்டியில் அப்ளை பண்ணும்போது என்ன வரும் ஜென்ஷன் ஈக்வாலிட்டி இம்ப்ளைஸ் தட் இ பவர் எக்ஸ் ஒன் பை என் எக்ஸ் டூ பை என் x n by n less than or equal to e power x 1 by 1 n e power x 2 by n less than so on e power x n by n right ipo on the left hand side thani thaniya pirichirukinga e power x 1 by n product e power x 2 by n product etc e power x n by n less than or equal to e power x 1 by n plus e power x2 by n sorry by n by n and so on e power x n by n right now i am going to take this e power x1 by y so let us take y i equal to e power x i then e power x i by n is y power 1 by n y i by 1 Now that inequality become y1 whole power 1 by n, y2 whole power 1 by n and so on, yn whole power 1 by n less than or equal to y1 by n plus y2 by n plus and so on, yn by n. So, you come, okay, the exponent are equal so we combine this, all the factors, so yn. Yeah. whole power 1 by n this is 1 by n is common in the right hand side so y1 plus y2 plus etc if left hand side irukra number enna solla mudiyuma geometric mean of y1 y2 yn right hand side number arithmetic mean right so in the left is geometric mean right is arithmetic so the jensen equality is reduced to the standard okay inequality is uh, geometric mean less than or equal to arithmetic mean okay now also one more thing suppose f of x equal to log g of x then what happened to the jensen inequality and the phi of x equal to e power x then jensen inequality become the following the exponential of interval over x log g d mu is less than or equal to interval over x exponential log g is nothing but log g sorry g d mu okay correct there is one more uh, okay little general to the uh, geometric mean less than or equal to suppose x1 is p1 p2 etc p another example right the measure of each single turn pi is alpha i am going to write right i from 1 2 3 etc n summation i from 1 to n alpha i equal to 1 then what happened to the what 
gets an equality as usual f of f from x to r is nothing but value of f is pi and phi is taken as e power x the jensen equality become the following jensen equality reduces to எப்படி ரிடியூஸ் பண்ணிக்கிறேன் இன்டர்வல் சமேஷனாக மாறிடும் இல்லையா இ பவர் இ பவர் ஆல்ஃபா ஒன் எக்ஸ் ஒன் ஆல்ஃபா டூ எக்ஸ் டூ ஆல்ஃபா என் எக்ஸ் என் எஸ் என் ஆர் ஈக்குவல் டு ஆல்ஃபா ஒன் இ பவர் எக்ஸ் ஒன் ஆல்ஃபா டூ இ பவர் எக்ஸ் டூ ஆல்ஃபா என் இ பவர் எக்ஸ் Again, I take y a equal to e power x i. Then the further this inequality reduced to 2. y1 alpha 1, y2 alpha 2, also 1 y n, alpha n less than or equal to alpha 1 y1, alpha 2 y2, alpha n y n. Okay, this is a general arithmetic mean the dominant. See, this is so called weighted geometric mean and arithmetic mean, right? If y1, y2, yn are n numbers, different numbers have different weights, right? Alpha and alpha to alpha. So, this is the inequality. Okay? So, this is the doubt trick. So definition of conjugate exponent. If P and Q are positive real numbers, such that 1 by P plus 1 by Q equal to 1, or or P plus Q equal to PQ. Then we call we say that P and Q a pair of complex conjugate exponents, pair of conjugate exponents. example so 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 now 1 right apo pq edathula enna irukku 2 illaya pq right 2 is conjugate exponent to itself 2 is conjugate exponent expand it okay okay conjugate i we say that pq are conjugate pairs conjugate exponents or we say that conjugate pairs right pq are called conjugate pairs exponents of conjugate pairs Okay, so 2 comma 2 is a conjugate exponent of conjugate pairs. So where are the pair lang? Sir, 1 by 4 plus 1 yes. by 3, 3 by 4 lang, sir. 3 yadutna, that is the corresponding pair. In the condition set, say, pannam. P equal to 3 yadutna, na, that is conjugate pair, na, that condition set, say, pannam, Q da, vayana, nak. Right? So, 3 yadutna, pannam, kondu, pannam, 1 by Q equal to 1 minus 1 by 3, This is 2 by 3. 1 by Q and 2 by 3. Apo Q, how do you go? 3 by 2. Right? So, clear? P is less than in, 2 would have a number. Q, how do you go? 2 would have a number. Other way also. Right? Apo as, 
P goes to infinity, what happened? If uh, P went to four, it turned out to be four. Four comma, and then calculate one by four plus one by Q equal to one, and then calculate one by Q equal to one minus one by four. This is three by four, right? One by Q, but Q equal to four by three. Four by three. Right, so four and the three would appear a number. Right, four by three, three by two would appear a number. Clear, right? So as p goes to infinity, what happened to q? As P goes to infinity. What happened to Q? Q will go to one. Abhi dhana. Correcta. One by P plus one by Q equal to one. One by Q equal to one. One minus one by Q. One by P. Right. Okay, if p goes to infinity, this will go to zero. Then this one by will go to one, right? So this, so so in this case, one and infinity they form a pair of conjugate exponents. Right. But infinity can only be one. Okay. So this uh, also uh, other way also minus infinity can be one. So pair means it's another pair. Okay. The next holders need quality so forth. Let's. P Q P and Q be conjugate exponents. Right, one less than P less than infinity. Let's x be a measure space. With the measure mu, let's f and g be measurable functions. Measurable functions on X with range in zero comma infinity closed. That means what? F is non-negative measurable function, right? Then the following inequality is true. Interval over X. Fg d mu is less than or equal to interval over x. F power p d mu whole power one by p interval over x. G q d mu whole power one by q. Right? This is the Holder's inequality. If I take p equal to two, then q become two, then you will have a Schwarz inequality. Schwarz inequality, right? So we prove the theorem, then uh, 
then we okay reduce the holders inequality cos is what's inequality okay okay so now so let us take the right hand side number the number capital a the number capital b in earth so yeah So let us take a equal to integral over x e of p d mu whole power 1 by p. So b equal to integral over x g q d mu whole power 1 by q. Right? And we define capital F capital B before that if any one of the number is 0 then what happens ok here F and G have same priority in the inequality so if I take the right hand side integral is 0 any one of the integral the right hand side is 0 then we check the inequality right suppose if a equal to 0, then integral of fp d mu equal to 0 implies fp is 0 almost everywhere. If integral of a non-negative measurable function is 0, then function is 0 almost everywhere. It's a p times multiplication. So this f equal to 0 almost everywhere. Implies fg 0, product of this is 0 almost everywhere. So integral of g d mu 0. Right? So your function is 0 almost everywhere, that integral of the function is 0. Right? So equality occurs in the holders equality. Right? Okay, so I take this as 1. Holders inequality is 1. So 1 holds. Right hand side 0 and left hand side also 0. So 1 holds. If B is 0, the same thing will happen in the G side. So, there is, okay, no, not necessary to discuss that. If capital A is infinity, then what happens? Trivially, 1 is trivial, right? The right, 1 is trivial. So, for whatever, uh, okay, FG the right hand side is infinity, so left hand side integral is d mu always less than or equal to infinity. This is true for you, okay? This is always true. Okay? So, in the case of a equal to 0 or a is infinity, star 1 is true, right? So now we have to prove the other case that we suppose 1 sorry 0 less than a less than infinity and 0 less than b less than infinity. If the same situation happens in b, the same thing also true. Or b equal to infinity, same thing, one is true, right? So we take this situation that So we take the situation that 0 less than a less than infinity and 0 less than b less than infinity. Okay, now we put capital F equal to small f by capital A and capital G equal to small g by capital B. Capital B, A are already known, right? Now I verify this integral Fp d mu. This is integral over x substitute Fp a power p d mu a is constant can be taken out 1 by a p integral over x f p d mu a p is what okay with root of the numerator so this is 1 so similarly integral over x g q d mu is also 1 okay 
GQD miss also. Correct? Already we know if a function value is infinite, then it is finite almost everywhere. If function value is zero, it is zero almost everywhere. If it is greater than zero, then uh, so it is finite almost. So we avoid two key, two things. If f is zero, if we take capital X in small x and capital X such that both f x is finite, and 0 less than g of x less than infinity. Then, the exponential function is 1 to 1 on 1, right? There exists s and t, okay, in real, real t, right? There exists in r such that e power s by p is f of x e power s by q equal to g of x. Right? This is true because of the following property. So basic analysis. So exponential function is, you know, if I take phi, is, phi of x equal to e power x, this is one to one function from, if I take phi of x equal to e power x, this phi is one to one from real to positive, right? Open zero comma infinity. This is phi is bijective. Okay, we take this as x size. The phi is bijective from r to minus t gamma infinity. If we take x by p, that also bijective, right? So, what do you mean by bijective function? If I take a value f of x in the range, then it has a unique s and t such that e power s p equal to f of x, e power s q equal to g of x. T q. Right? The second one is t q, right? Okay. And we know from the convexity of the exponent since exponential function is convex. E power s by p plus t by q, which is less than or equal to 1 by p e power s plus 1 by q e power t. The last, okay. The inequality proved in the law, okay before the definition of conjugate exponent, right? This implies e power s p, e power t by q is less than or equal to 1 by p e power s plus 1 by q e power t, okay? e power s p is f of x, this is g of x, which is less than or equal to 1 by p f of x power p, right, plus 1 by q, g of x power p. Now integrating on both sides, this is true for any x in capital X. So integrating the bone equality.
over x we have interval over x capital f g d mu so this is not equal to 1 by p is constant f p d mu plus 1 by q interval over x g q d mu okay integral f p d mu g q d mu are one so this is one by p plus one by q these are also one so we have proved that integral over x f g d mu is less than or equal to one now substitute the values of capital f capital g in the place we have integral over x f by capital a small g by capital b d mu so less than or equal to one we take the a b outside we have integral over x f g less than or equal to 1 so we cross multiply a b is less than or equal to capital a capital b these are all exactly on the right hand side of the one a b is or this is integral over x f p d mu 1 by p so capital b is integral over x g q d mu whole power 1 by q this is a one holes okay and we proved that if if a equal to 0 f equal to 0 almost everywhere that is avoided because okay this is uh, if this is not zero f is also not zero almost everywhere right infinitely if f equal to 0 then integral is zero so the following is true right a equal to 0 these are the proof okay so the proof mudinjathu if a zero va irundha f is zero almost everywhere f is zero almost everywhere na integral zero a zero so if and only if if a non zero na f non zero almost everywhere right angle is zero va adoda measure zero if f is not zero almost everywhere na enna artham set of all elements f is zero In the point line, f zero or kudo, that would measure zero, right? If f of x zero or kudo point over here has measure zero. If y equal to infinity, y is finite, then f is finite almost everywhere. So, angle line f of x infinity or kudo, and the points are clear, that would measure zero, has measure zero. So this is the condition. Another thing, another thing is zero less than f of x, less than infinity, and zero less than g of x, less than infinity. Another thing, yeah. If f of x is zero, what is that? Right? Small f of x zero. If it is under the point line zero, what? That is measure zero. F of x is infinity. What? Capital f of x, small f of x infinity. Right? In the in the points, if we two points collect, what? What is that? So default x and capital X such that either f of x equal to zero capital f of x or capital f of x is infinity in the set to the measure zero has measure zero. So another in the set to consider in the in the or set to the measure zero also in the set to the consider but not there will be. And another I am assuming it by. we consider only for those x uh, okay whose values are positive and finite okay positive real number and that only consider okay so adut minkoski eppadi cos is what's in equality kondu varudhu p equal to q equal to 2 then holder's inequality reduced to the following Holders inequality 
reduces to integral over x f g d mu is less than or equal to square root of integral over x f d mu square root of integral over f square d mu integral over x g square d mu right ipo sub ipo f g are positive functions eduthnaara eduthla non negative functions eduthnaara suppose f g are real functions then we apply the holders inequality for mod f and mod g as a primaro holders inequality general holders inequality. holders inequality be equal i'm going to apply holders inequality on the modulus of f and g now integral over x mod f g d mu is less than or equal to integral over x mod f p d mu whole power 1 by p integral over x mod g q d mu whole power 1 by q this is the holders inequality for real functions or if you if you even take a complex function the same inequality is true right how do you take this we take complex measurable functions right measurable functions Okay, the inequality is true. Then you can reduce to different measure spaces to find the different holders in equality, right? And also, Schwarz inequality becomes this one integral Cauchy Schwarz. Mod F G D mu. Lesson are equal to square root of integral mod f square d mu square root integral mod g square d mu right over x and in the sequence spaces okay mu is counting measure okay suppose I take x n and g n or v n are two complex sequences then The holders inequality is the following: x n y n. This integral mod f g d mu is the coordinate wise product, which is less than or equal to right summation n from one to infinity mod x n p whole power one by p. So in the place of integral, we have summation. Summation n from one to infinity mod y n q whole power one by q, where by p one by q summation is. This is a holders inequality, and okay, holders inequality for some for the sequence. Okay, this already you have studied, right? Okay, metric space so proven a lot of studied. Small LP is a metric space in proven, right? Like the holders inequality studied, right? Minkowski inequality is studied, right? Metric space is proven, right? The LP is into the na okay, so the fall. Complex sequences such that it is p-summable. One less than b less than infinity. This LP is a metric space in proof. Any thing? Like basic real system. For this value, right? <coughs> 